Hey there! Today I'm going to talk about a pen that is a design icon. If you collect fountain pens, then you probably know that there are some pens that really stand out from the crowd because they are special for some reason. For example, we have the Amas 360, which is special because it has a triangular cross section. Uh, another pen that I think stands out is the Waterman Karen, which comes in a number of models, but they all have this nice inlaid nib. Uh, another pen that I think stands out is the Noodler's Flex Pen. It's a lot cheaper than the other two I've shown you. But don't forget, this was the first time that a flex pen uh, was made available on a large scale and a very reasonable price, uh, which I think is, is worthy of praise. Today I'll talk about one of those design icon pens. And today I'll talk about the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149. This is a very expensive pen. I got this one pre-owned at a very reasonable price. But if you buy it new, expect to pay more than 600 euros, which is a lot of money. Um, why do people like this pen? Well, for some reason Mont Blanc is considered to be one of the most exclusive fountain pen brands out there. It's one of the older players, has been around for a long time. The Meisterstück range, because it contains other pens too, uh, has been around from about the, the mid-twenties of the last century. So it's been around for a long time. People think it's exclusive, and that's why I really liked reading about Mont Blanc in one of my favorite fountain pen books, Fountain Pens, by Peter Twidle. Peter Twidle is the curator of the Fountain Pen Museum in Great Britain, and he's a, a gifted fountain pen repairman, as was his father, who had a fountain pen shop, and who also repaired pens. Uh, he, he wrote, Peter Twidle wrote something in his book on the Mont Blanc pens, and I would like to share this with you because, as I said, everyone seems to think this is the most exclusive pen brand in the world. And then I read this. On a strictly personal note, my father became a good friend of Mont Blanc and went to Germany in the 1950s, where he trained in pen repair at the Mont Blanc factory. He was one of the first retailers to introduce Mont Blanc into the United Kingdom and was always a champion for its cause. Indeed, one of my very first school pens was a Mont Blanc. In later years, he became disillusioned with the company, mainly due to its arrogant refusal to recognize a design fault with their piston filling mechanism, which even today causes those current models that employ it to overfill and therefore flood. Its current marketing policy is based entirely on its self-perceived importance, and when the tide turns, as it inevitably will, its fall from grace could be quite dramatic. I really like that. Okay, now, having said that, let's take a look at the pen. I'll cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like and don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Alright, first of all, the cap. Of course, it has the white star, the emblem of Mont Blanc, its logo, which is on everything it makes, even down to its razors, which I saw recently in a German city. Mont Blanc razors. They don't come with converters, by the way. Okay. You know, to, to collar your beard or anything. Whatever. Um, the cap. The uh, the clip. The highlights. This is all gilded. So that's, uh, again, a bit exclusive. The clip is springy. A bit stiff, I think. But it will definitely keep your pen in place. Uh, on the clip is a nice little sort of ribbed thing. Which is fairly nice. Um... Then we have the little gold ring. Yeah, sorry, I was I was looking for something here. The um, serial number is engraved there, and on the other side it says Germany. All right. So then we have these three rings, which I think you could mistake for Conway Stewart, which also has three gold rings on the cap, but uh, the middle ring sticks out a bit in relief, and it says Mont Blanc. Meisterstück number 149, and then it says PIX, P-I-X, and that baffles me. I'm not sure what that means. In any case, 
The cap, the barrel, the whole pen is made of resin, which means that even though it's large, it's not particularly heavy. I think it weighs about 30 grams inked up. Another gold ring, and then we have a blind cap, which you can unscrew, and if you do that, the piston uh, moves forward, and then if you screw it the other way around again, then the piston will move backward, and it will suck up ink from the bottle, because it's a piston filler. Which is fairly interesting, the 149 actually stands for three different things. One means it's a, a pen in the Meisterstück range, which has been around for a long time, as I told you. Um, uh, the 4 stands for the filling mechanism. Actually, I always thought that the 3 indicated a piston filler, but perhaps I was wrong. I, I have to admit I'm not a Mont Blanc expert. And the 9 indicates that it's a nib size 9, which is, I think, the largest nib Mont Blanc makes. Okay, so there we have it. And screw the pen. Uh, the cap, I mean, sorry. The nib. A beautiful bicolor nib. This is 18 karat gold with a silver material. I think it's not real silver, I think it's rhodium. Um, it looks insanely cool. There's a lot of detail here with, with nice little curls on it. I, I'll try to do a close up in the uh, writing sample later on. I heard there was even some platinum in this uh, uh, nib. The nib has a big M on there for Mont Blanc, I guess, or Meisterstück. No, actually, I think. Oh wait, it has the, um, the the white star again with an M in that. So I suppose Mont Blanc Meisterstück. It has a 4810 on there, the height of the Mont Blanc mountain. Um, and then it says 18K Mont Blanc 750 for, again, 18 karat. This is a double broad nib, which means it lays down a fat line of ink, uh, which is really nice if you like such things. It's... Um, with a little bit of pressure, because it is a slightly flexy nib, uh, this lays down a line that is about as wide as a fine felt-tipped pen would lay down. So that's a significant line. Um, we have the feed, nothing too special there. And then at about this height, you can see, why well, you probably cannot see, there's an ink window. So there's some bits of clear resin. Now, the owner, as I said, this is... Uh, did I tell you? Well, no, I, I don't think so. This is a pre-owned pen. I got this at an auction site um, at a very reasonable price. Very reasonable price, I have to say. The owner told me that the um, ink window had turned opaque because he used a lot of black ink. It can happen. I have to say I don't really mind. It's, it's useful to be able to see the ink level. But usually, I, I tend to notice when I run out of ink when the pen stops writing. So it's not a big issue to me. Okay, so those are the parts of the pen. What do I like about it, what I don't like about it? Well, what I like about it is pretty much everything. This is a big pen. It holds a lot of ink. Uh, you know I have large hands. Well, this is a significant pen. It has about the same girth as, as my, my index finger, I think, which says quite a lot. Um, holds a lot of ink, you can do a lot of writing. In this case, it's useful that I have a large ink reservoir, because I said, as I said, it's a double broad nib, which means it, it sucks up ink like there's no tomorrow. Still, uh, I've been writing with it for a couple of days, done quite a bit of writing, and it still goes on and on and on without any problems. I think the good side of the pen, as you can see, the size is, is quite significant when I post it. It's even bigger. It's really large. The, the good side of the pen is also the downside. If you have smaller hands, then I think this will be uncomfortable. I gave it to someone else just to, to try it, and he immediately said, Oh, no, no, that's way too big for me. I can't hold that comfortably. For me, it's not a problem, but if you have smaller hands, then I think this is not a useful pen to buy. Another thing that might uh, upset you a bit is the price. The price is very steep. If you buy this new, expect to pay more than 600 euros, which is a lot of money, of course. As I said, I, I got it uh, at a, a very reasonable price. It's pre-owned. It's pretty much as good as new. Um, so I got lucky. But if you want to buy it all new, you're going to pay a lot. Apart from that, I think it's a beautiful pen. Uh, yes, the black and gold, we've seen it before. 
uh, if it's a design icon, well, it has this beautiful cigar shape, uh, which I, I really like. Uh, it's decently made, very decently made. It's ergonomic, it's, it's pleasant to hold if you have larger hands. Holds a lot of ink. I really, really like it. So, that's the Meisterstück 149. Enough talk. Let's do some writing. So, I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, writing with the magnificent Montblanc 149, the Meisterstück. As you can see, this is a really nice nib, very nicely made. Okay. The ink is uh, turquoise by um, Pelican. Let's do some writing. Writing is smooth. This is a double broad nib, which lays down a fat line, as you can see. Um, also, it is somewhat italic-like. So, these lines are quite a bit narrower than these lines. And I was applying a bit more pressure there, but even if I apply no pressure, you will see the effect. So, it's somewhat italic, actually. So when it comes to line variation, there is quite a bit, not just this. But also this. You see there's quite a bit of variation in the wider and the narrower lines. Looks very good. Okay, well, this pen lays down a lot of ink very quickly and very evenly, as you can see. If I do some fast writing, you see that the pen keeps up fairly well with the writing, so the feed, nothing wrong with that. So there you have it, the famous or perhaps infamous Mont Blanc 149, the Meisterstück. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later.